Okay, for the front of your guitar, you're gonna come get one of these from me. This is basically just a book matched board. And we need to make sure that this, when it gets glued together, that this little tight gap is, there's, there's no gap at all. So, so just take off the tape and we'll joint the edge that the tape was on. And just hold the two boards together nice and tight when we run this across the joiner, both at the same time. Okay, so just check to see if it fits nice and tight. This looks a lot better. Um, sometimes you have a little bit of snipe on the joiner. Now this is up at the top, not a big deal. But I do see a really small gap right here, even when I put pressure. So let's go ahead and run this one one more time on the jointer. Hopefully that'll solve that problem. We just want it to be nice, tight all the way through. And that came together a lot better. So now there's no gap anywhere along the whole line there. Come to our jig here. This is the same one that we did to glue the back together. And so you should be familiar with this process. We have our little wedges here. Get our front in place now and we'll just tip it up and get some glue on those edges and then again just use this little jig to glue this together you don't need a ton of glue just get a little bit and spread it around so it covers the entire edge of both the boards and then you'll want it to be lifted up a little bit you can adjust your clamp blocks the little wedges there if you need to and then when you put some good pressure down it should snap down with nice tight pressure we'll grab our little block has some wax on one side that way you can just put it right on top and we'll just take some little spring clamps clamp that in place and that way it'll keep that nice and tight again just let this dry Okay, now this has been drying for at least 30 minutes. We can go ahead and just take everything off and get our piece out of here. We'll just kind of loosen up our wedges. Sometimes you have to whack them a little bit. And we need to take this over to our wide belt sander, that time saver sander, and get the thickness sanded down. Right now your thickness is just a hair bigger than an eighth of an inch. Um, and so we gotta get this down to 0 0.100. Very first thing, remember just to check that our air pressure is on. Over here you can see this little red switch. It's flipped up so it is on right now. If it was down like that, it would be off. So we wanna make sure that's flipped up all the way. So our air pressure's on, and let's start off at 0 0.150. Right now it's at 0 0.250, so to change that, we just type in the 150 start, and this will adjust to 150. Just the two green buttons to turn it on. This one will do the sandpaper, and this one will do the conveyor belt. And we'll go ahead and send it through, and we're gonna remove only a hundredth of an inch each pass. This was at 150. Our next pass is going to be at 140. As soon as it comes through the other side, we'll just type in 140 start. We'll adjust to 140. We'll flip our board over and get the other side this time. We'll repeat this. Next will be 130, then 120, 110, and then your last pass at 0 0.100. That should be our last pass. All right, we've sanded it down to 0 0.100 for the thickness now. And we need to mark a location where our little hole is gonna be at. And I have a little example board here. You can 
just open this up and just kind of place it on here the best you can, kind of centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. You have some wiggle room. If you can see the seam where we glued the two boards together, that's best to try to center on that. Sometimes it's difficult to see that. And just get it placed so that the bottom has some extra space, the top has some extra space a little bit. And we're gonna mark a little pencil line as close as we can eyeball it to the center. There doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. But just get it somewhat there. Then, We'll take a quarter inch drill bit in our cordless drill here. Already got one set up. And please make sure you do this on a scrap piece of wood. I've got a scrap piece of wood here so you don't drill a hole in my bench top, one of my jigs or other things like that. And we'll just drill a quarter inch hole right through where we marked the little dot. I've got this little jig here that has the same little quarter inch hole here and this is where we're going to be cutting our little rosette slot so we'll get a rosette from me um, and we're going to be able to insert that into our front so just kind of line it up so the quarter inch hole that you drilled is right over top the other hole and then i have this little router here that has a little pin and you're going to just place that little pin into the hole, make sure it slides down and recesses down inside there. We'll plug it in. When we turn this router on, we'll just rotate around the whole thing and it'll cut our little slot for our rosette. Have it kind of lifted up when you turn it on and we'll plunge down. pressure down as we're rotating around. It's a good idea to go around twice. That way it might clean up any spot that may be lifted up or other things. So go ahead and go around twice. And we'll carefully take the router out of there and check to see if our rosette fits. We'll notice sometimes after cutting your rosette you get some of these little fuzzy tear out parts here um, and your rosette might have a hard time fitting in there. So if you take this little piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand over some of those, you can kind of just sand on the inside here and you'll just knock off a lot of those little fuzzies there. It'll help your rosette fit in a lot easier. So go do that all the way around. And the other thing is your rosette might be too big in the fact that once it gets placed in here and it'll overlap on top of itself so you might have to trim a little bit of the rosette so when it pinches together on there it'll line up better so just that you'll see as you start to press your rosette in and work its way all the way around you'll see that the one part's going to overlap so we just have to trim a little bit just take some cutters and cut that and we'll sand all the little fuzzies off and then we do want to glue our rosette in and you want the part that has the gap facing towards the top because your fretboard is going to cover that up okay so you just fit your rosette in and anywhere where it overlaps just kind of mark it where you're going to cut it it's okay if there's a little gap because again, it's going to get covered up with your fretboard, but try to get it marked pretty close. It'll come together pretty tight. I've just got these little cutters here, and you'll just snip off right where you marked it. Just a little bit of glue. You don't want to fill up the entire slot, so just a small little thin line of glue. You don't even need to smear it around. Just once the rosette goes in there, it'll spread itself want to make sure this gets pressed really tight you should be able to feel with your finger if it's really tight that there's not really any part sticking up at all it should go pretty flush it's perfectly flush with this so it's not sticking up anymore we'll just press that tape down real tight just let that dry
Okay, once that rosette has been in there for at least 30 minutes to dry, go ahead and take the tape off. And we'll do a little bit of sanding on it just to kind of clean it up. There might be a little bit of glue squeeze out or some other rough parts. Um, and so we'll just take a sander and probably just a random orbit sander here. I would probably put maybe some 150 grit sandpaper on there and just kind of clean it up with a sander. In order to cut out the sound hole here, I've got this little cutter device here. You'll take the little pin and stick it in the hole there. Just line up your hole with the one that's already drilled there and just get the pin in there. And this should be already set to the exact size um, depending on what size sound hole we're cutting out. We're cutting out a four inch sound hole. So I've got this little small cutter set exactly two inches from the center of the pin to the tip of the cutter. If we're doing a different size sound hole, we can adjust that, but don't adjust it without um, me. Just to, I wanna make sure it should be all set up. So this will just over the top of the pin. Go multiple times. A little bit of pressure at first, and then we'll get a little bit more pressure each time. All the way around. It takes several times around, but it'll cut it out. Okay, and then once you get it all the way, you'll see the middle part start to spin. And once that's spinning, it should be ready just to remove and pull out that little sound hole. And there we go. Right after you've got your sound hole cut out, and the rosette inlaid in there. We're gonna go ahead and trace the outline of our actual guitar shape here. And we'll just trace it and we'll cut out that shape on the bandsaw. As far as lining this up, try if possible to get your middle part of your guitar lined up with the seam where you glued the two pieces together if possible. And we also wanna just make sure you have excess on all sides so it's not overlapping anywhere and so we just want to try to line that up as best we can as far as the placement of this goes where this curve on the inside curve comes around you want that just below the center of your sound hole probably about half inch three quarter inch below the center so if you're looking at your sound hole here the very center and you're looking at that smallest part of these curves, those should be just below the center of the sound hole, about half inch, maybe three fourths of an inch below. It's not that crucial to get it perfect, but you do want to get it pretty symmetrical, you know, not shifted way over to one side. Try to get everything that's lined up as perfect as you can. And then we'll trace it and then cut it out on the bandsaw helpful maybe if someone else will hold the guitar for you while you trace. You just don't want things to move. Just get a nice sharp pencil and trace all the way around. We'll go to the bandsaw and we're going to cut this out on the bandsaw. When we cut it on the bandsaw it's very important that we do not cut right on your line. You actually want to cut and leave maybe a quarter inch extra. So when you're cutting on the bandsaw, do not cut on your line. Cut extra. You don't need a ton extra, but maybe a quarter inch, half inch at most, all the way around your whole entire shape of your guitar. And we'll make sure our guard is just barely above the board. You can adjust that right here with this knob. We can raise the guard higher or lower. We want it just a little bit above your board so your board will slide through but your fingers can't hit it. Go ahead and turn it on and cut out our shape. Nice and slow and careful.
want to save some of your scraps here because we're gonna use some of these pieces of the scraps for some bracings. So don't throw these away, we'll save it. Again, we're leaving our line all the way around. We can always trim off a little bit more if we need to, but we just want to leave some extra. 